Well, next up, eventually we're gonna get the correct fan clutch for this. We're gonna get that replacement hose that I broke. And uh, then we'll get this oil pan removed. Hi everybody, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you're here. I know I'm glad to be here. This is a 2005 Chevrolet 3500 Express fan. Customer states vehicle has engine oil leak. So uh, let's cut right to the chase, get it inside and locate the leak and see what's going on. Nice. I see what you did here with the AC belt. And uh, that is awesome for a Toyota. It's a Toyota belt. It's even better. Cool. Ruh -ruh, what's going on here? We got a oil change indicator warning indicated. Check engine lights on. And 159,964 miles on the odometer. <laughs> Check it out. It's got a liquor audio system. It's awesome. Okay, so since this thing is big and my lifts are small, I'm just gonna bring this over to the alignment rack. We wanna get underneath and uh, take a look at her nether regions, uh, so to speak, and uh, see what's going on with that oil leak. I bet money it's an oil pan gasket. Pizza! No one's here to guide me up. I'm just gonna send it, see what happens. Full speed ahead. an easy hood not really a hood it's more like a mini hood good job GM on that paint Been doing that for like 30 years you should stop doing that all right so first glance I see some nice shiny stuff here got a new shiny radiator looks like a, the AC accumulator has been replaced and battery all right what else we got in here let's see Air filter looks good. It's got a new water pump down there. Ah, I see something. Right here by this new coolant temp sensor, I see oil leaking from the valve cover. See that? Okay, let's raise this thing up. Check it out. It's got dual side exit exhaust and a little bit of paint damage. That's not cool. Ha! Ah, my guy put Flowmasters on this. Look at that. It's freaking awesome. Okay, so here's the deal. I know we've got these valve cover leaks from way up high on both sides. That accounts for some of this oil. Um, I'm gonna replace that gasket. That thing always leaks. My logic here being is there's lots of oil up here in the front too loads of it and it appears the majority of this is coming from the pan i don't see any liquid drippings from any higher up okay i'm gonna recommend that we start up top replace those valve cover gaskets uh remove this oil pan see what's going on with all this silicone business over here uh, inspect the back cover for leaks when the pan is gone and uh, i guess we'll go from there Okie doke, van coming back down. Let's uh, plug in the scan tool and see what's up with that check engine light. Okay, scan tool is powered on. Loud noises outside. No AC in here. Engine restarting, max coldness. And silence. There we go. Peace and quiet. Oh yeah. Okay, we are in Chevrolet 2005. That's really far down on the list. Getting old. Uh, 2005. Auto ID says it's an 05 Express rear wheel drive, six liter V8. That's probably an LQ4. Awesome engine. Let's just see what we have here with throttle cable. That one. I had a 50-50 chance. Don't worry about it. Codes menu. Display, please. You guys know the drill. All of them. 
Oh my god, what's going on? Engine coolant metal over temperature. Okay, that's weird. Engine misfire detected, O2 sensor, circuits, bank one, what just disappeared? We lost one. We had a misfire, now we don't. All right, something's going on with the heater circuits on the O2 sensors, that's bank two, both of them, sensor one, so it looks like the heater's crapping out. The misfire code went away. Engine coolant metal over temp, what is this? P1258, I never saw this before. Let's just see what everybody else did to fix this real quick. Just, just give us some direction. Replaced engine coolant thermostat. Hey, okay. It's got a new water pump. We saw that. Da, 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 da. It's got a new radiator too. That's strange. Bulletins? Do we have bulletins here? Uh, coolant recycling, aluminum, heater core, blah, blah, blah. Nothing that states the code. Okay, we'll just have to diagnose this the old-fashioned way. Okay, we're backing out. I'm going to go ahead and pull up data and just take a quick review of that uh, engine coolant temperature sensor and just make sure it's uh, somewhat reasonable. Let's see what we have here. Well, coolant says it's 194 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale. That's uh, well within spec. I wonder if I can see some freeze frame data for that trouble code. Let's go back again. Here we go, freeze frame data. This is gonna give me a snapshot of all the data that was listed and pending as that trouble code was set. So we wanna select our 1258. Why, do, why does it say metal over temperature? I don't get that. Uh, no, this isn't what I wanted. I, I wanted freeze frame data. Okay, I got it right here. Uh, that last happened 789 miles ago. It failed four times. It passed 255 times. Engine was just above idle. Uh, engine coolant temperature in degrees Fahrenheit was 266 degrees. Yeah, she was a little warm. Uh, we're gonna ask about that just to see if they had to put a thermostat in that when they put a water pump and a, a radiator in it or not. Maybe that's already been handled. Uh, it's been seven, eight hundred miles or so since they uh, that was last cleared, so perhaps that's a non-issue. We shall see. Let's see what cylinders were misfiring when this misfire code was set. Now this could have also been set because the thing was overheated. That's that's also a possibility. Let's see. It first started misfiring seventeen hundred miles ago. It last misfired five hundred seventy-one miles ago. Okay. Again, 600 RPMs. It could have been during that overheat area. I don't know, 200 degrees, maybe not. Does it tell me which cylinders was doing it? It does not. Okay, so I hopped into the misfire counts and we've got cylinders one through eight listed here. They're all showing zero current misfires. Now there was some that occurred in the past looks like it was cylinder two cylinder four and cylinder six those were our primary offenders with a couple other miscellaneous ones on the uh on the other side since they're all on one bank that's kind of indicative of something like a vacuum leak or maybe even exhaust leak uh, however uh, those misfires are not present right now if we look at the current counts we have nothing and i'll go through the throttle range just a little bit blurb test we have no no misfire showing up here hmm. all right oh well one thing I noticed when I was looking at those misfires is they were all on uh, bank two now that was the p300 code we had misfires on two four and cylinder six um, I'm gonna go ahead and skip past that for now because I want to pay attention to that o2 sensor the uh, the one that was hanging up that had the three different trouble codes was the uh, bank two sensor one o2 sensor and that one is responsible for telling the ecm how to calculate its fuel curves now again that code has uh, not had the conditions meet for failure for like six seven hundred miles something like that so this may this problem may have already been solved by some previous repair we saw there was a lot of other work done there but perhaps they never cleared the uh, the DTCs out of the system. 
like I said, it's it's been the lights have been on for six seven hundred miles, and the last time they were cleared were several hundred miles again. So uh, I actually kind of need to go back to the well to get some more details on all the repairs that were recently done to this truck. That way I don't go off and uh, make an assumption real quick, like and do the wrong thing and and uh, and end up in the wrong place. Uh, basically, I'm just trying to collect all the data that I can so I don't look stupid. Because if I'm going to look stupid on the internet, I'm going to do it on purpose, not by mistake. Now, looking at the data for the O2s, we go down to bank 2 sensor 1, that's our affected with the uh, trouble codes. Uh, these are the heater pins, they're not the actual air-fuel ratio monitoring section of the sensor, this is for the heater element. And we can see that the amp draw on this particular sensor is 0.12 amps, whereas the rest of them, they're hovering right around a half of an amp. So we do have a discrepancy in how much current that particular sensor is drawing. Uh, like I said, I suspect that that's a faulty sensor. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let them uh, let our sales guys give this dude a call. We're going to grab some more details and then I'll make some decisions after that. So stay tuned. It's going to be a really good video. All right, I got this van off the lift again. Uh, we're now going on a test drive because uh, our guy has added some concerns. Uh, they state that the front end gets all flippity floppity and weebly wobbly when they run over some bumps. Uh, I went down there while it was still up on the lift and uh, I gave all the uh, the ball and socket front end joints a bit of a squeeze with my channel locks and they've all got some play in them, uh, especially the idler arm and its bracket and the pitman arm, those things were all over the place. So uh, I'm just going to go drive it and uh, just verify that uh, it is the front end that is flippity flopping and uh, I'll add that stuff to the uh, guesstimation. This uh, sideways steering wheel right here along with this pole to the left also indicates to me there's a huge alignment problem which could definitely be caused by worn out uh, steering components. Alright, so I'm rolling around in a thunderstorm uh, in a traffic jam so I haven't gotten any speed to where I can try to run over some bumps here to sort of feel this thing flip and flop and uh, like I said, when I started this test drive, I've already visually identified some steering suspension components that need to be replaced, uh, and I just kind of wanted to verify what the guy's uh, described symptom was. I'm going to see if I can't find any bumps up here uh, on the way back to the shop, and then, uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and swing back in and prepare this estimate. All right, looks like we're going for glory on this one. We're going to go ahead and uh, do those valve covers. Uh, I think I'm putting in some spark plugs and wires while I'm in there and I think and I'm not certain yet that I may be doing the uh, oil pan reseal. Okay, so uh, let's just start with this doghouse. We'll pull this guy out of here. We've got four bolts right here and then once that's out I can get to some clips that are down here. Two more over there and then this whole unit will come out there and then I can get to the top of the engine. Here, let's just go ahead and pull these guys out right now. side. Ah, oh, you know what? I do this every time. I forgot to pull the kick panels down. Or no, they're not kick panels. Those are knee bolsters. So I've got to pull those down. These guys get two more bolts. One of them up here. Oh, there it goes. I got it. I know where it went. Become unclicked. Exposed. We can see a whole bunch of much more leaks from this side. Let's see what we got going on here. 
Oh yeah, a lot of it's valve cover. See all that right there? That's a crap load of oil. All right, let's get in here and get started. I, uh, I don't have to show much mercy to these plug wires because I am replacing them with new ones. So let's go ahead and get these guys out of here and clocked out, out of the way. Then we'll disconnect the coils and we'll pull the coil bracket off. The primary goal here is to get to these valve covers, but uh, while we're here, we're also gonna put these uh, spark plugs in. My logic being, do to do. <laughs> Why go through all this work? Just to find out we don't need to, but I am gonna, I am gonna check those plugs right there first. That one actually looks pretty good. I don't wanna put something in there if we don't need to. Yeah, let's just see what we've got. It's best to do that. Unclick. Okay, old spark plug is right here, and I'm just gonna measure the gap on it. And we're coming up with what do we got there? 50, 54, 55 thou. I think the glare is messing that up. Let's get rid of that guy. And I have a new one straight out of the box right here. And our gap on this one is 41,000. So, uh, yeah, we're just over 10 thou, 12 thou worn on these older ones. I'll go ahead and replace them. Works for me. My point of checking is because we don't want to sell something if we don't know if it's any good or not. And for all we know is this stuff could have just been done. Which is why you don't approach it saying, hey, by the way, you need this too while we're in there. It should be a, hey, by the way, we're going to check on this while you're in there. That's my two cents for what it's worth. Check one more. Yeah, they're looking similar. Let's see what we've got for gap. Spin that around. Well, we got 50, 54 thou on this one. Not as bad as the first, but it's still 12 thousandths over 11, 11 thousandths. So I'm taking a look forward and I, I forgot that the oil, uh, oil fill tube runs into the top of this valve cover. Uh, we need to take that out in order to get this valve cover out. So we kind of need to stop right here and go around under the hood and disassemble some of that stuff out there. Uh, that actually works to our advantage because I am gonna end up putting a fan clutch in this as well. Uh, because of that, I still have to take all that stuff off. So we're actually gonna, we're gonna walk away with a W on that one. So here's our fill tube that runs down and then goes into that valve cover. Uh, the issue is, is it's mounted with a series of brackets and I need to loosen those brackets. So let's get all this good stuff out of the way. And this is why we make a plan, so we have something to deviate from. Call it the non-plan plan. The plan is to actually not have a plan. Uh, to have a fluid plan, so to speak. Okay, I need to get in there and disconnect this tube from the throttle body. Right there. Nice. Come out. Come out, please. Let's see, we don't need this. We'll just toss that over over there for now. You stay. That's what we're looking for. These brackets right here. First, let's unbolt the trans dipstick. Another doodly do. Never ending. Oh, I just dropped that bolt. That's. That's the theme of this job, huh? Bolt dropping day. Let's see if I can repeat with a nut. Nut dropping day. Ooh, it's still a little hot in here. All right, not out of the woods yet. There's still one more bolt on this bracket way way down there and trying to reach it my angle from my dangle is not right let's try it over here can't get it from the front try it from the other side get on there you i need a shallow socket yeah okay that configuration wasn't working for me so i got a real long extension and different wobblies <sighs> 
again without doing something stupid. Reverse clickage there, yeah. Come out of there, it's hot. I don't want to reach in there. All right, now we can get this uh, fill tube out of the uh, valve cover. Maybe. There, all right, yep, it's out. That's all we need to do. And the rest of this stuff can just hang out over here up at the side. So I'm still finding it a little warm in there, so I'd like to hang out out here in the fan for as much as possible. Let's just fire this guy back up. Give me some cool breeze and uh instead of going back inside and being hot i'll stay here and only be halfway hot and i think i'll remove this fan shroud real quick uh, like i mentioned a moment ago i've got to replace this uh clutch fan because it's a little weebly wobbly also we can't have fan operation with weebly wobbly fans can we we've got eight bolts on this shroud and some flashlight gravity. I didn't even touch that one. That, that just happened for no reason. You know, Eric O has these same flashlights and his flashlights don't do this to him. Eric, what's the deal, dude? Did you modify your flashlights? Okay, let's lose these wire loom connectors. Another. Put that aside like so, and I'll tuck it underneath of the hood latch. That way it stays where I want it. Three more bolts on the other side there. Let's go over there. Oh, uh, where's that other one? I can't see. You. Yeah, this is a gravity kind of car day what we're doing. There's one. There's two. Hot in there. Hot, hot. Three. Okay, we're gonna take this up a radiator hose and uh, shove that on top of the alternator. That stays back there. So you see line can go back there, and now we can start to fish this shroud out. I'm gonna pull the dipsticks. It's a shame too, this was just taken apart because somebody had replaced this radiator. There's our fan. Okay, it's time to unthread the fan clutch from the snout on the water pump. Do that with my extra long chisel right here. I know you guys hate when I do this this way because you think I'm going to ruin the water pump, but uh, but I'm not. So I'm going to continue to do it this way. Loud noises. She goes. The slippage told me so. Let's protect our radiator. That's the best hiding spot in the building. It's not me. It's you. You might get a little tornado going right here. It's not me. It's all race shit. What? What I do? You get all the fans lined up in the right way. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got like this vortex thing going on around here. If we get them all in the right thing and we thought to add moisture, maybe we could start hurricane the that's shop. That's what I'm doing with this, uh, this swamp cooler over here. I figure if we bring in a couple more fans, uh, we can get like a whole circulation effect going through the entire building. Yeah, and then start a tornado and have to go home early. Uh, I don't need to start a tornado or leave early. Let's go shut the power off. It'll take them days to figure out we just killed the breaker. They won't know. 
it, is it will that's that not sad, work? Yeah. Like seriously, that'll Dude, work. You pull the breaker out. Just go. It's right happen. outside. You go pull the main breaker, and everybody just goes, I don't know what happened. Well, you know, we'll sit around for 20 minutes, and then we'll leave. And then by the time they figure it out, everybody's already at home. Day's <laughs> over. Yeah. See. Is that not? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were off. I started drinking. I can't come to work. That would be a liability. <laughs> Oh, I am an evil person. Good thing I don't use my powers for that. Evil shenanigans. Let's head over to the bench. Go ahead and pull this fan assembly down. Blade gets reused. The clutch does not. Okay, let's see what we got here. So there's our OE unit. Lots of fins pretty meaty and our new one is crap look at that thing no 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 rejected does not meet quality standards okie dokes well I had to order a new one so we're waiting on that uh, in the meantime I'm kind of dead in the water because I don't want to go back inside it's hot in there um, so I figure I'll just take this opportunity to do something that uh, you guys didn't really expect. Nice and shiny. It's all about having fun. You gotta have some fun. If you're not doing that, you're just wasting your time. Open. Inside shiny even better than just outside shiny gravity shiny look at that nasty you know one cool thing about dropping your flashlight is it will tell you where it's at yeah let's get that fourth spark plug out while we're up here because we cannot really get it from inside we got to get this one from uh from under the hood if i can get my wobbly socket on there Doo -doo 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 -doo. Got it. Kinda got it. Okay. Freedom. There it is. Okay, new plug. We'll put this one back while we're up here. Always start them by hand. Always. All right, that one's good. And I'm just using the tool to run down the threads. I will uh, torque these manually, like always, most of the time. Uh-oh. A weeble wobble slipped off. Gotta keep the wobbly bits under control. It's imperative. Failing to control your wobbly bits can lead to very negative consequences. I stuck this guy on a ratchet. I'll just uh, tighten this manually. And get my mitts on it again. There we go. Click. Well, that was easy. And the driver's side spark plug is going to need a very similar treatment. It's pointed towards us in this direction, and I can't get to it from inside of the cabin. Uh, first things first, I'm going to lose this coolant temp sensor connector right here. Uh, those guys like to break off, and I don't want to break it. Unclickage. Space. Get on there, you. Yeah, that's it. That's what I want. Leverage. Oh, what? 
I'd really like to not do this and do those valve covers. But it's just too hot in here. Just give it a wiggle, wiggle. See how that sensor can be so easily broken? It's like right there in my way. And if I take it out, it's gonna dump out a bunch of coolant. Broke that wire too. Last time I did this job on a, I think like a Silverado, these wire ends broke off and some new people to the channel came in yelling at me about how I couldn't take the time to remove the wires without breaking them. And I'm thinking, what does it matter? I'm putting new ones on it. <laughs> Can you like, shut up? Hurry! I suppose that while I'm right here and this other wire is staring at me in the face, I'm gonna go in there and uh, yank that one out too. Maybe not so violently this time. I, I think I might be able to get better leverage on it. Because, yeah, that's what's up. Just like so. Look at that. It's beautiful. And I'll yank the plugs too while we're here. All right, come here, spark and plug. Okay, the rest are coming out from the inside. But that doesn't mean the new one can't go back in right now. Or can't it? You gonna thread? What is this? Get in there. What's wrong with you? Yeah, that's in my way. It was distracting me. Uh oh, wrong way. Right way. The way of the click. Click. Now I guess I'll go ahead and throw one of these wires on because I won't need to be in this area ever again after I uh, get done with this little segment. And they won't be in the way for future work so I can plug this guy in right here. Make a liar out of me. Become plugged in now. Click. Got it. I'm not going to plug in the coil because I still have to remove the coil in order to uh, get the scalp cover off. So I'll just leave this thing dangle right here for right now. Okay, I moved back around to the inside now. We're on the driver's side. I've uh, already taken the liberty of pulling out the remaining three plugs on this side just for the sake of time. Uh, and now I'm going to get the three new ones put back in. Uh, same setup, I'll set the plugs and the wires up and then I'll pull these valve covers off to change the gasket. That's my, my speedy get it done with some relative efficiency plan. Preliminary click. That's a new style click here. Actually, that itty bitty little bump right there probably brought it close to spec. I think spec on this is actually very low. 15 pounds or something silly like that. You know, you guys are, you make comments about uh, me working one handed, and I'm actually not. Even though right now you see one hand, the other one is actually holding me up over the seat and holding the flashlight. Click. So although you don't see the other hand, it's doing something. There we go. All right. Okay, plugs are in. Let's uh, let's work on this valve cover. I know I said earlier we were gonna start on that side over there, but we ended up on this side over here. So uh, that's just how it's gonna be. Oh, come on now, let's get in here. Gross. Crusties, plastic crusties. Look at that, it's just disintegrating. I hope I have some more of that. I, I hate to leave wire 
in such a condition. Now we do not have to remove each coil pack individually, nor do we have to unplug them. Uh, all I need to do is pull these studs out and the, the entire assembly will come out with a bracket. So let's do that right now. And I think there's one more stud up in the front that I'll have to get from under the hood. Okay, let's pull up this PCV line, positive crankcase ventilation. That goes over there out of the way, we're good here. Hang on, I missed one somewhere. Uh, there's one more somewhere hiding out. Where is it? It's gotta be up towards the front. Oh, duh, it's right staring at me in the face. You gotta be kidding me. All right, coil pack. Come on out of there. There she is, four coils. Just look right here at this leak. That is huge for a valve cover, look at that. Haven't seen one this bad since a Toyota. Yeah, I bet it's creating all kinds of smoke running down on the exhaust, dripping down everywhere. Uh-oh, broken exhaust bolt. Rock bro. I better go uh, let everybody know that I found that, and I, I think there's actually one on the other side too. So um, that, that might change things here, it might not. Uh, we're already spending a boatload of bucks on this thing as it is. But now would be the time because we're already halfway here. But we have to remove these manifolds in order to uh, replace these bolts. So I'm going to let them know what I found. And uh, we'll see what we're going to do. We may change directions on our non-plan plan again. And we may not deviate uh, due to the discovery of the bolts. We'll see. Stay tuned. Okay, we're going to call the guy. Uh, add that operation to the estimate. And we'll see what they want to do. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to proceed with what I was doing. There are four bolts that run through the center of this valve cover. And I need to get the fourth one from the front. Okay, valve cover slash rocker cover. You're coming with me. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, kind of crusty. Yeah, here's our gasket. It's super flattened out. A little crusty. Okay. Yeah, that's nasty in there too. All right, let's back it up and we're gonna move this doghouse back over to this side. That lets us go back to the passenger side. We'll go work over there next. Alrighty, the advisory staff has been made aware of the broken bolts. Uh, I told them that the fix is going to be to remove the manifolds, extract the broken bolts, uh, replace all the involved gaskets, and then reassemble. Um, it would be to the customer's advantage to have that repaired at this time, just due to the uh, overwhelming amount of overlapping labor that's already built into this. They can get away with this one uh, fairly cheaply, whereas if this were the primary job, it would actually being very end up being very expensive. So you get you get into a more efficient operation when you start to stack up overlapping labor because I don't charge for overlapping labor. That's just not right. You shouldn't have to charge for things twice. I mean, I don't mind getting paid twice. All right, and there's that one sneaky one in the front. Let's see if I can get it from here. No, yeah, no, yeah. No. Give me back my tool. Uh oh. Screwed that up. I had a feeling that was going to happen. Send it. Re, you're damaging stuff. Yeah, there's an elusive PCV hose up here in the front, too. Let's just pop that guy right off of there. 
We'll give it a twist first to break the surface adhesion. It's one of my favorite words to say. Adhesion. Come here. That's tight. There, okay, got her. All right, let's pull this cover off. See bolt transfer. Uh, NASCAR. Similar nastiness under here. The leak wasn't as bad on this side, but it was uh, it was still pretty bad. All right, let's head over to the parts washer and clean those things up real fast and throw the new gaskets in. We'll do that in high speed to save time. All right guys, that's it. We went from super nasty to nice and shiny. Mostly shiny. Some spots I really couldn't get out, but a lot better than it was. I know nobody will ever see it and it doesn't matter, but it matters to me. And don't worry, I didn't forget. the new gaskets already set up in the grooves. These are Phil Pro gaskets. They're blue, so you know that they're good. Let's go ahead and get these guys installed next. Uh, this is the passenger side. We can tell from the oil fill hole that's on the front of the cupboard. Set that down right there for now. We need light. Let's just clean off this surface so there's no oil there or dirt that can interfere with our gasket. Nice. A little bit up front. Let's get up there. Okay, let's get this guy back into its home. Lined up. As always, start all the bolts first by hand before torquing any of them. There we go. come back and torque wrench those later. Get this hose on. I'm watching it to make sure it doesn't tear. And it did. Okay, we need a new one of those. While we're here, I wanna wash off all this extra oil. Yeah, let's get all this out of here. It's running all down the back side of the engine. And I have to go down there later for that oil pan and I don't want to uh, deal with it. Oh, nice and shiny. This is beautimous now. Air. Okay, a uh, couple things going on. The phone's still ringing, the hose is ordered. This is nice and shiny. Let's throw the uh, coil packs back in. Someone get the phone. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It just doesn't stop. What's going on? There's like three of them working. Doo -doo -doo. I don't mind the phone ringing. But the phone eternally ringing, that's different. I can't get down with that. It hurts my head, like on the insides. 
Click. Tighten these down. And yeah, I already torqued the valve cover bolts when you guys weren't looking. Click. All right, that's all those. We're good here. Let's, um, I don't want to do the spark plugs yet in case we're going to end up uh, pulling these manifolds off. I don't know yet. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, the customer has not uh, responded to our contact attempt about these bolts. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put this back together, assuming that we're not going to do it. Um, it's. I need another spark plug. It's really minimal risk to me. At worst case scenario, I've got to take it back out again. It's not a big deal, but I'm trying to save time, not waste time. Okay, back on track. A few moments later, and seven dollars. So we're nearly done with this side. So as soon as I torque these plugs here, we'll toss the wires back on, scooch around the driver's side, and then throw those wires back on too. Kickage. I know, we're all over the place on this job, I know. It keeps evolving and changing. There we go. All right, where's my wires? Three more wires and heat shields, freshly lubricated. Audible click, that's how you know it's good. And we wanna turn these so they don't interfere with the doghouse. They will rub through and make misfires. That would be bad. Okay. There we go, felt that one snap, good. That's the hard one down there. It's hanging out underneath of the dipstick tube. And there's stuff in the way. Hand leverage. Oh, I don't know if I got it. I didn't get it. Yep, I got it, yeah. I pulled on it and it felt pretty tight. This is good. All right, let's get to the other side super shiny valve cover with new blue gasket let's get this guy back to its home where it belongs right there oh, we are not lined up failure we're really not lined up what is this there we go go in there ah there and number four, far away. Mm -hmm. I can't find the hole. Can't even get the tip. Uh-oh. What is this? I'm gonna wiggle it around some. Oh, I went too far the wrong way. It's not gonna work. I mean, it might. You gotta force it. There. Torque those later. All right, deep breath. Not breathing, only out. couple developments uh, I've just learned that the customer does not want to remove these manifolds and replace the gaskets we're getting we're getting a little pricey 
with this visit and uh, we don't want to overdo it. And second update is that fan clutch that I sent back is kind of unobtainium to replace where we went ahead and called the dealer and ordered a uh, an OE one. We've actually ordered a couple replacements that state that they're severe or duty or more heavier duty and uh, they all end up being the same little flimsy guy and I don't want to use that not in this uh, particular application. So the fan clutch portion is kind of in limbo for right now. All right, bolts, studs. Stud click. Get in there. PCV hose is on. One wire is on down here. Let's get the rest of them. I've got one wire dangling up in the front. I have to connect that to the coil. I'll do that from under the hood. I think it clicked, I don't know. Let's oh, double check. Uh, what? I got the right one. What'd you get? A fan clutch? No, you didn't. Yeah, let me see. Woohoo! Hey, wait. You see that one? You gotta suck. <laughs> wrong, <laughs> try again. It looked right for me though. Yeah, wrong diameter. Right there. Sorry guys, okay. try again. I'll move it back to oh. wrong, one. wrong one again. That one wasn't even close. What's going on here? I bet those parts guys are so mad at me because a lot of folks would just stick it in and send it just because it fits. Oh, what's the what's the saying? If it fits, it ships. Not always. But this wire doesn't fit. Let's try to tuck it that way. There we go. That's better. I'm pretty sure it's on at the plug. I, I can't remove it with ease. <clears throat> All right, one more, one up front. That's a second cylinder back. You can't see. Oh, and I did dielectrically lubricate these uh, spark plug wires for the record. All right, come here. I'm still gonna, oh no, it fell off. What am I doing? Now it's all lubricated. Because I touched the grease there. I felt that click. That was good. One more up front. All right, everybody. We are done with this particular operation with the exception of a couple nuts and bolts back here on the firewall side. So I'm going to go ahead and get this doghouse back on after I plug these coils back in. That would have been a fail. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm going to get the doghouse back on and resecured and uh, put the trim pieces back on and that will uh, go ahead and bring this uh, video to conclusion. Uh, but fear not, there will end up being a part two because next we're going down below to pull the oil pan off and uh, reseal it. I'm also going to pull the inspection cover off the transmission and just get a, a visual on the rear crankshaft seal on this engine. Uh, the guy said uh, someone told him it was leaking so we're going to verify that while we're down there. Uh, that being said, as always, like thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know what to do. Let me know about that by tapping tap that like button down below. So again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys well, Next up, eventually we're gonna get the correct fan clutch for this. We're gonna get that replacement hose that I broke. And uh, then we'll get this oil pan removed. So don't forget to look out for part two.